All right, guys, happy Wednesday and welcome into episode show number 23 of AL.com Recruiting. I'm your host, Simone Eli, alongside Ben Thomas, who covers all things high school sports throughout the state of Alabama. This is AL.com Recruiting brought to you by Southern Orthopedic Surgeons, here for the athlete in all of us. We've got a stacked show today, a lot to get to. Going to switch things up just a little bit today, Ben with our main guy, Quinshawn Judkins. We're going to have a live commitment on the air in just a few minutes. The Pike Road quarter uh, running back making his decision, so that's going to be huge. We have other recruiting updates, some spotlight games, as always, to get to. But the man of the hour, Ben, is going to be Judkins. His decision and where he's going to take his talents uh, for the next four years of his career, but a guy that we've been following for a while now. He's narrowed his schools down, Ben, and we're looking forward to this one. Yeah, show number 23. Looks like it could be our best show, Simone, and hopefully it'll, it'll set a pace going forward. But uh, Quinshawn, great player for Pike Road, who, who happens to be the number one team in Class 5A right now, uh, one of the leading leading contenders for the 5A state title. And uh, Quinshawn missed the first couple of games with an injury, but is now back and, and playing well. Um, last week, he narrowed his choices down to three schools, Auburn, Notre Dame, and Ole Miss. And uh, gracious enough to to come on with us and, and tell us where he wants to go today. Yeah, he's had some big games in the games he's been able to play. You check out his numbers right there, 240 on the ground, five scores. Uh, ben, this is a guy who is going to be a force. He's been incredible for, incredible for Pike Road to this point. And uh, wherever he ends up deciding to go, they're going to get a, a guy on and off the field that is super talented. Yeah, I mean, I've been talking to Coach Patrick Browning at Pike Road for a while about Quinshawn, and uh, he just talks about his athletic ability. You know, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, he's got speed to break away. He can also, you know, go between the tackles. So really, really good player. He's number 11 on our AL.com A-list of top uh, senior prospects in the state that we published this summer. Um, he's got a, a teammate who's also right there, Curtis Perry, uh, is on that list as well. But uh, Quinshawn is certainly one of the top players in the state of Alabama, and and by that means one of the top uncommitted players in the state of Alabama, at least until a few minutes from now. At least until a few minutes from now. Without further ado, let's bring in the man of the hour, Quinshawn Judkins, joining us live from Pike Road High School. And uh, Mr. Judkins, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you. You told me before we started the show how much you love the camera. You have such a great mentality about this. How excited are you to uh, to finally get this off your back, be able to make this decision today? Very excited. You know, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm just ready to make the decision. Christian, uh, tell me a little bit about how you're feeling. You've been able to compete in a couple of games um, as of late. You've done really, really well on the field. How are you feeling um, that hamstring injury that you were kind of dealing with before? I'm feeling 100% now. I took some time to, you know, take a, take a break and let it heal, be 100% and get back there out there with my guys. And I'm feeling great. Quinshawn, tell us a little bit about your team this year before we get to your commitment. You're undefeated, ranked number one in the state. I'm sure you got goals to get a, a blue map maybe. How do you feel about Pike Road kind of at the mid, midpoint of the season? I'm feeling strong about us winning state this year. Um, everybody's bought into the system. What Coach Brown has put in, everybody's accountable, and every guy on the team is doing their job. So I feel like we're going to have a great season. Quinn, Sean, you, you've narrowed your uh, your list here. Tell me what it was about these three schools, Auburn, Ole Miss, and Notre Dame, that you've liked so far um, before you actually make your decision. I love that each coach that's been recruiting me from each of these three schools, you know, we had great relationships. They've been on, on me since they offered me. Um, yeah. John, how, how's the uh, whole recruiting process been for you? I mean, has it been a pain? A lot of some guys say it's been think it's been great. Kind of wears on some guys. How's how has the recruiting process been for you, particularly coming out of COVID when you can finally take some trips to places? Yeah, coming out of COVID, it was hard for a minute, but you know, a lot of things got back to normal. So I wouldn't say it would be stressful for me, you know, but it was it took a time took took some time to get used to it. What is the biggest thing that you are looking for in a school? What is making what what stands out about the school that you're going to choose? The schools that I'm going to choose is a school that stands out. You know, a great relationship with me, my parents, um, just a great fit for me. All right, Ben Thomas. I think it's about that time. Uh, 
Quinshawn, you're the man of the hour. It is your time to shine. Let us know where it is you are going to take your talents. You know, first and foremost, I want to thank God. You know, without him, none of this would be possible. And I want to give a special thanks to my parents for always supporting me and making all the sacrifices throughout my career. Um, I want to give a special thanks to my teachers, my trainers, my family for all the endless support through this journey. And, uh, you know, with that being said, With that being said, for the next three years, three or four years, I'll be taking my talents too. Oh, Miss. Wow. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Headed to play for Lane Kiffin. Quinshawn, what ultimately helped you make your decision? You know, Coach Kiffin, Coach Smith, um, Coach Levy, all that they showed me on the board, on the field, how successful they are with the new staff coming in, how I could be successful there, me as a player, how I play, um, and how I can get to the next level. You know, I wanted to be a part of that, and I wanted to be a part of that vision. Coach says that you could fit fit in well like things with that offense. I mean, it, it's obviously exciting. Was that a big part of your decision? Yes, sir. Most definitely. You know, Lane Kiffin known for offense, and you know, I thought that was special for me. You know, me being an offensive guy. So, with the old line and with me being a great running back, so why not? Tell tell us about Lane Kiffin. What what's your experience? What's your experience been like with him? You know, Lane Kiffin, a great guy, great coach, um, special coach. He showed me the things that he's put in. Um, and I think I can, you know, play that. Now that you have this decision uh, kind of behind you, how much are you able to focus on the remainder of your senior season there at Pike Road? Oh, most definitely, you know, the success we have so far, 6-0 and coming into the uh, – our no, 5-0 and coming into our sixth game right now. I think we'll have a great season and a great run, so that's what I'm focused on. You obviously have a, a great supporting staff behind you. Tell us who it is that you have with you today. So right here, I got my, my dad, my main man, my <laughs> sister, and my mom. What's it been like to have them in your corner? You're getting a bunch of hotty toddies in the comments here, folks tuning in live. I know there are a lot of people fired up to see you make your decision. What has it been like just to be surrounded by so many people who care about you and want to see you be, be successful moving forward? Uh, you know, it's a blessing to always have them around, you know, help me make great decisions for me, myself. Um, you know, just be there for me. Sean, I don't know if you know it or not, but Ole Miss got a big game coming up this weekend. Yes, sir. What do you uh, What do you think about them against the Crimson Tide? Um, I think they'll play a great game. You know, like I say, Lane Kiffin being a smart offensive guy and just a great coach in general. Um, I think it'll be a special great game. What type of goals, Quinshawn, do you have for the remainder of your senior season? Uh, you guys are having a fantastic year so far. You've been able to be out on the field with your guys, um, playing incredible. What are your goals moving forward now? You know, I'm a team guy, so first goal is to always win state championship with my guys. And, you know, personal goals, you know, I just want to win, honestly. Ben? Well, man, congratulations. Thank you and your family for, you know, for, for being a part of this. Really awesome. Congratulations to you. We look forward to uh, seeing what you do in the rest of your senior. How, how good does it feel to kind of have this decision made and be con concentrating on your final, hopefully, 10 games at Pike Road, right? Yes, sir. It feels great, you know, to go ahead and get it out the way. I've made a decision, and that's why I'll be going to school so now I can focus back on my guys and going to practice today and working hard, getting back to it. All right, good stuff. Quinshawn Judkins, the running back over at Pike Road, is headed to be a Rebel and play for Lane Kiffin over at Ole Miss. Congratulations, congratulations, young man. We're looking forward to the rest of your career in high school and, of course, what things look like when you head over to Ole Miss. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and thank you, family. All right, Ben. Well, there you have it. Uh, 
Quinshawn Judkins is headed to Ole Miss. Uh, pretty, pretty cool to be a part of that moment with him. Uh, that was really, really neat. Really cool. I mean, I was kind of going back and forth, forth with that this week, Simone, as you know, trying to get that set up. Got to yeah. thank Patrick Browning, uh, the head coach of Pike Road. He really helped facilitate that. And, and Quinshawn, you know, these kids have so many outlets now where they can uh, commit Simone. And I just kind of reached out and said, hey, you know, we do this show. Would you like to come on? And, uh, and they were happy to do it. Um, we actually asked Coach Browning to uh, maybe if he wanted to give us some comments on the show. But um, he said, I thought to his credit, Simone, hey, I want this to be Quinshawn's moment, um, and it was. And, look, Ole Miss is getting a great player. I mean, you know, he, this is a kid that really had a lot of interest. He visited Notre Dame just a couple of weeks ago. Um, and kids – Simone, kids have got to be excited to be playing in that Lane Kiffin offense. I mean, oh. you know, what what they do and, you know, the points they put up, especially if you're on the offensive side, wow. Um, I can't wait to see him uh, yeah. next year. No doubt about it. Quickly also want to thank our guy behind the scenes, Patrick Greenfield, for running the board, doing all the producing behind the scenes to make what you just saw happen. Quinshawn Judkins, the running back over at Pike Road, is headed to Ole Miss. If you're just tuning in, this is L.com Recruiting Show number 23. I'm Simone. He's Ben. Brought to you by Southern Orthopedic Surgeons. Uh, ben, there is no doubt that folks are excited about what Lane Kiffin is bringing to Ole Miss. Uh, there's a lot of just energy over there the offense has been great uh they have a heisman a potential heisman candidate quarterback uh this game this weekend is really going to determine a lot and i think that that judging by last year's game we're not sitting here trying to preview this game too much but judging by last year's game the shootout that we saw between alabama and ole miss uh nick saban and company knows this is going to be tough when you get guys that recruits like this in there who are ball players can make things happen and put points on the board um that's when you know this offense can roll yeah, I was interested to see if Quinshawn gave us a, a prediction, a score prediction of the game. Um, I'm sure the Ole Miss fans listening uh, would have liked to have seen that. But uh, yeah. he uh, he played it very politically correct, I thought, Simone. He, yeah. he, didn't you? I mean, he didn't give a score. He, did. he didn't say, oh, we're going to win. He just said, yeah. it's going to be a great game. We got Lane Kiffin, and I think everybody knows it's going to be a great game. So yes. uh, you could tell Ole Miss you're not only getting a good football player, you're getting a smart football player. No question. No question. We're very happy for Quinn, Sean. A lot of uh, disappointed Auburn fans in the comments. Um, but, uh, you know, best of luck to Mr. Judkins moving forward over there at Pike Road in his senior year and then going to Ole Miss as well. Ben, um, I, we want to talk about a couple other recruiting updates. Um, I know Jarrell Stinson is a guy who's going to be making a decision here soon. Uh, what is the latest that you've heard former Auburn commit announcing today? Yeah, of course, you know, Jarrell, um, like you said, was was he committed to Auburn strangely right after Gus Malzahn got fired, like in the last couple next couple of days. And um, you know, that was everybody thought that was kind of strange, but still he stayed that with that commitment until I think it was early this summer, and then he decided to decommit. Uh, I talked to him about that. He said, Look, it was nothing against him. It just it just didn't feel like a fit to me. Um, he has narrowed it. You know, last time I talked to Jarrell, he had narrowed his choices down to three Florida schools, Florida, Florida State, UCF. Uh, Penn State and coincidentally Ole Miss. So, you know, it's possible, I guess, that this would be the first of two good uh, news days for the uh, for the Ole Miss fans. So we'll see. I think Jarrell told me he's going to commit this afternoon. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Yes. Like we have talked about um, all preseason and now going into week five of the college football season, recruiting amps up. Guys get the opportunity to go on campus. They get the opportunity to actually see what game atmospheres look like. And listen, winning helps. It's no secret. Uh, we knew that as the season went along, we'd see guys decommit. We'd see guys make their decisions. As Ole Miss continues to do well, don't be surprised to see Lane Kiffin pick up some recruits here throughout the next couple of months. All right. Other recruiting updates to get to, Ben. Um, Tony Mitchell over at Thompson, um, the defensive back there, has narrowed his list to seven. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, interesting. We got kind of a – it's going to be – Really interesting to follow the race in 2023 to be the top prospect in Alabama. Uh, right now, a lot of services have Tony uh, as the number one guy. You know, Peter Woods, his teammate, uh, has also been in that spot. Um, Tamarian Parker, a guy from Central Phoenix City, we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. I think he's got a chance to get to that spot. But right now, as we talk, Tony Mitchell, uh, most people have him rated as the number one prospect in Alabama as a junior. Uh, so he narrowed this week, Simone, he narrowed his list to seven. Uh, a lot of good schools on the list, as you would imagine, F Florida, Georgia, LSU, Texas A&M, Alabama, Clemson, Oregon. 
Um, man, you can't get that. Uh, that ain't bad. That's like <laughs> that's, that's, a, yeah. that's a powerful seven list. I don't know. You know, like I said, he's only a junior, so I don't know if he's how close he is to getting a commitment. They got, you know, we've talked about that all star team. They already got a one DB, Traquan Fagans, who's committed to Miami. He's a senior this year, so mm-hmm. um, we'll see. But Tony Mitchell, you know, I think most people still have him pegged to go to Alabama, but there's a lot of good choices on that list, and he's got a lot of time to make his decision. So we'll see. Um, if that happens. As we know, he would not be the first Thompson player or the Thompson defensive standout to decide to grow with Alabama and Nick Saban. Uh, seems like it's become like a feeder program almost for kids going to Tuscaloosa. Uh, meanwhile, uh, looking at the class of 22, Madison Academy athlete Deuce Spurlock makes his decision, Ben. Yeah, he. Um, this was an intriguing decision, Simone, because he got an Auburn offer on Friday night. Um, and, you know, obviously Madison Academy has quite a kind of a pipeline to Auburn with Carrion Johnson and Austin Troxel, Malik Miller, uh, to name a few. Um, so he was telling me that it was a really tough decision because that offer was big to him. But the bad news is for Auburn is right if they offered him, he went on a visit to Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, and got to see a Michigan game in the big house. They beat Rutgers and made a defensive stand. And so on Sunday he announced that he was committed to Big Blue, uh, Michigan which I don't know, I haven't done the research, but, you know, that fresh in my mind, I don't remember a lot of guys from Alabama going to play in, at Michigan, but uh, Deuce Spurlock is a guy who's probably going to be a, maybe a linebacker at the next level. He plays a lot of positions at Madison Academy, as, as a lot of kids do in high school, but uh, probably going to be a linebacker there at Michigan. So, you know, it seemed like Auburn maybe got on him a little bit too late. Of course, you never know. I mean, we're still – you know, what, two months away from the first signing day. So anything can happen until they sign on that dotted line. But uh, right now he seems very happy and was fired up to be a Michigan commit. All right. So recapping quick, what we have recruiting wise before we get into our weekly spotlight games, do Spurlock commits to Michigan, Tony Mitchell, the 23 DB, one of the best in the state, for that class narrows his list to seven. That list includes Alabama. So that's something to keep an eye on moving forward. Jarrell Stinson looking to commit later today um, or sometime soon, potentially to Ole Miss. We will see. Uh, and then Quinshawn Judkins, of course, we were honored to be a part of his big commitment to Ole Miss. He's had to play for Lane Kiffin. Um, that was very exciting news coming about 10 minutes ago. Ben, any other recruiting updates before we move forward here? No, I mean, I just, you know, big week. And like I said, fired up to have Quinn shine on. I thought that that went great. Great to see his family there. And um, hopefully we can uh, continue to do some of that along the way. All right, guys, let's take a look at our spotlight games. we got a big one in 7A this week. Hewitt Trustville at Hoover, two uh, powerhouse programs, two of the better teams in the state uh, out of that 7A region three there. And Ben, when we look at these two teams, uh, we, they're just athletes all over the board. Yeah, it's very similar to when Hewitt Trustful played Thompson a couple of weeks back, right? Um, you know, Hoover, I feel like, Simone, and maybe this is crazy, that Hoover's ranked number two in Class 7A. They're number two in RL.com Power 25. But I feel somehow they're getting a little bit overlooked because Thompson has been so dominant. Of course, those yeah. two will face off um, down the road, and we'll see um, we'll see what, what happens there. But obviously, you look at just a couple of guys that Hoover's got that are college guys. Marcus Clark on the DL is committed to Coastal Carolina. Bennett Meredith, I think we've talked about him. He's the guy that trans- the quarterback who transferred in from Spain Park. He's had a really good year. Had a great debut over in Georgia when they played uh, North Gwinnett over there, and has just been rolling. And then Dale Miller, another one of those guys who's going to be a, a top, probably a top ten prospect as a junior uh, coming in next year. So um, good players as always for Josh Niblett and crew. Yeah, I'm looking over uh, for what Josh Floyd has over at Hewitt Trustville. Just a ton of athletes all over. Uh, Justice Finkley just recently made his decision uh, to roll with Texas. Omari Kelly has been Auburn commit for a while. And then Riley Quick uh, going to play baseball. Ben, is that still what he's deciding to do over there in Tuscaloosa? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think so, although I think there's some wavering there. I mean, he's told some people that he still wants to be recruited. I've noticed in some of the rankings that they're now re-ranking him. I mean, we when we did our A-list top 15, we did not rank him because at that time he had said, I'm going to be a baseball player at Alabama. Um, but I think when you're in season at a particular sport, Simone, and, and you're feeling the love of that sport, maybe it um, – Maybe it changes your mind. Of course, he may be when he gets to baseball, uh, it may be a different. You know, as we talked about with him, his position in baseball is pitcher, Simone. Yeah. So, uh, and his position on uh, in football, obviously, is offensive line. Yeah, so, yeah. 
um, you, you can't really do both in college. I mean, you just, you're going to have to gain a lot of weight to play in the SEC, which he could play in the SEC if he wanted to. He has offers. Mm-hmm. Um, Auburn was really hot after him, you know, before he decided to play baseball. You just, that weight fluctuation is not going to work. So maybe he decides to play football. We'll see when it's all said and done. But he was the class 7A pitcher of the year. So this yeah. is, it's not a guy who's like just, you know, doing this on a whim. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned Justice Finkley. Uh, committing to Texas, which was kind of a surprise. He had Alabama and Colorado in his final three. That happened just a couple of weeks ago. Omari Kelly, uh, Auburn wide receiver commit. Interesting to see what he thinks about the departure of their wide receiver coach, Cornelius uh, Williams there. So, uh, and then, you know, Hunter Osborne is another name we'll know in, as a junior. I mean, he's uh, another one of those guys who could rise to the top of the, the crop in, in the state of Alabama next year. Anything on K. Caruth and his decision, or what he's if he's getting looks, what what that situation is for the Huskies quarterback? Yeah, I'm sure he's getting looks. He's had a good year. I mean, I don't know if he's close to deciding anything, but yeah. um, you know, he plays in an offense um, like Quinshawn and like you know the guys at Thompson that scores a lot of points. Josh Floyd is uh, an offensive guy, so uh, he'll get some looks. And if he wants to play in college, I, I'm sure he'll have an opportunity. I'm not. I don't have any intel right now on on where that might be, though. All right, staying in 7A for our second spotlight game, a different region, but two powerhouse programs on the less central Phoenix City at Auburn, uh, both having pretty good years, no doubt. Um, ben, again, just I, I feel like I'm just like a broken record with this, but athletes all across the board, we tend to see that when it comes to 7A programs, um, but this is no different here at Auburn High. Well, I mean, this week is going to be a separator in these two regions, Simone, region two. Uh, where is it where this game is and then region three there with with Hewitt and Hoover Um, Auburn and Phoenix City both undefeated both in the top five Uh, if you look at these Auburn guys you know Powell Gorn obviously been committed to Auburn for a long time linebacker been kind of one of the cheerleaders for their class Uh, but their offensive line is really where they're stacked Eston Harris is the is the kid who transferred over from Beauregard Mm -hmm. Uh, Drew Bobo is Auburn offensive coordinator Mike Bobo's son Um, you know Auburn's got a shot with both those guys um, you know, I think Alabama may have a shot with Harris, but um, I think Auburn's got a shot with both those guys. And then, of course, you got a junior who we didn't even list right now, Braden yeah. Joyner, uh, who's been playing a lot of defensive line this year. But I think by trade, he's an offensive lineman. So um, those are just four of those guys on a really talented Auburn team, which is, as you remember, played for the state championship just a year ago. Yeah, and there's no question that Brian Harson is looking to keep Auburn kids in Auburn if he can. That includes uh, Central Phoenix City not too far away. Uh, and a guy you see there, Caleb Nix, what's his future look like? Ben, what do you know about the recruitment of Bo Nix's younger brother? Well, he's had a good year. I mean, I don't, I don't know um, where his offers stand at this point. Uh, again, he's got a lot of weapons around him. They, they're putting a lot of points on the board. But, you know, games like this, Simone, and then getting into the playoffs are games where kids can really take off um, and, and how they perform in these type games. So we'll, we'll see where he goes. Obviously, you know, his coach, his coach, his dad being a former college coach, former Auburn player, we'll see, we'll see where he lands. Um, the, the two guys to really look for are those two guys at the bottom, the juniors, Tamari and Parker on the defensive line. I mentioned him earlier, may very well be the top prospect in Alabama next year um, before all said and done. And then Carmelo English, spectacular wide receiver um, for the Red Devils there. And so I, I feel like Central Phoenix City is another one of those teams that, you know, even though we're under, they're undefeated, they're kind of in an area where we hadn't heard a lot about. They hadn't gotten maybe a lot of publicity other than in the Auburn Opelika area there. Um, but, you know, they win this game. Obviously, they kind of announce themselves as a threat to make the championship game, and, and we'll see where it goes from there. All right. Can't believe we're already past the midway point of the high school football season. October, pretty much here, y'all. Friday uh, is October 1st. That's when we will see the bulk of our high school games throughout the state, um, the bulk of our recruits out there playing. Ben, uh, it's been a really good show, man. I've enjoyed this one. Uh, This is really, really cool. Appreciate you getting uh, Judkins there, making his decision to go to Ole Miss, all of our recruiting updates as well, and our spotlight games. Man, I'm not even sure what else we could talk about if we tried. Yeah, I mean, we probably do need to mention Simone. Uh, I should oh, mention something. This. All right, Ben, what you got? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm going back no, on you, but uh, at an out of state commitment, Alabama got a big commitment yesterday from Elijah Pritchett uh, yeah. from Georgia, number 94 recruit uh, in the state. He chose Alabama over Georgia, Florida State, and USC. So just adding a little bit of fire to our already great show, Simone. 
I love it. Absolutely. Anytime the Bama can get a commitment over Georgia in their own state, that's pretty big time. But uh, guys, it's been a great show. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode number 23 of AL.com Recruiting, uh, brought to you by Southern Orthopedic Surgeons. He's Ben Thomas, uh, Patrick Greenfield behind the scenes. I'm Simone Eli. appreciate our sponsor, Southern Orthopedic Surgeons, here for the athlete in all of us. Y'all have a great rest of your Wednesday.